Now we're gonna write some code to make our player move or allow our player to control the character's movement with some input. We'll allow them to move around with a controller or the keyboard that they have. So to do that, we're gonna to need to reopen up our player script and add in a couple more lines of code. It's actually relatively simple. You'll be pretty impressed with how easy it is, I think. Let's open up our player script and then go down here to our update method. So in our update method right now, we have this message that we're updating at some time. We're gonna delete that message. We don't need to log something every frame. This is just so that we could see the code and see something happening without doing anything complicated. So I'll select that line of code and hit the delete key that should clear it all out. Now, what I wanna do next is move my rigid body component or move my object around using that rigid body component. So I'm gonna need to do two different things. I'm gonna need to read the input from our player and then apply that input to our rigid body. So let's start by reading the input, seeing what that looks like, and then see how we can apply it to the rigid body component. So what we wanna do is read in the horizontal and vertical inputs for our key keyboard controller and our, basically our entire system. So to do that, we can say var horizontal. I'm gonna spell this correctly. It doesn't have to be correctly, but the next part does have to be. Equals, and we're gonna use the word input with a capital I, I-N-P-U-T, dot get axis, which is a capital G and a capital A, then open parentheses, which is that shift to nine, and a quotation marks, so the double quotes. And here we need the word horizontal. It needs to be spelled exactly right, and it needs to be cased correctly too, with a capital H. So I'll add a semicolon to the end of it, so it looks just like this. Now we've got a variable that will be assigned to whatever the horizontal value is on our system. We're gonna talk about what that means in a moment. First, let's log this value out. So on the next line, we'll hit enter at the end. We'll type debug.log. And you can see it's actually trying to auto-complete for me. I can hit tab and tab and it'll just auto-complete and fill that in. Or you, if it doesn't auto-complete, you can add the parentheses and put the word horizontal with no quotation marks. I'm going to save, control S, that got rid of the star there. And then we'll jump back over to Unity and see what this did and how this works. So now that we're in Unity, it's not gonna do anything until we've pressed play. And of course it won't do anything if our alien doesn't have the player script. So make sure that you select your alien, make sure that it still has your player script that you haven't accidentally forgotten it, removed it or did something weird, and then press the play button. Once we do that, we should see our game mode. We got our character right there. And if we go to the console window, we should see a bunch of zeros writing out here. That's because our horizontal input right now is at nothing. It's zero input. We're not pushing to the left. We're not pushing to the right. But if I click in my game window and I hit the A key or the D key, I'll see this value start to change. The D should turn it all the way up to a one and the A all the way down to a negative one. And you'll see it kind of go in between there as well. What it's actually doing is trying to replicate the behavior of an analog stick. So if I push to the left, I should get a negative one. And if I push to the right, I should get a positive one. You can kind of see that happening. And the reason that I get the partial values is if I'm like, part way over here. So if you tap on a keyboard, it'll actually kind of pretend that you slid a, a stick over instead of going immediately and snapping all the way over. So now we're reading our inputs and you can see that value showing up there. Now we just have to apply that to our player's rigid body to move them around. First, we'll stop playing, and then let's take a quick look at the game object that we have here in the inspector. We have a player script here, and if you look too above, above this polygon collider, we have a rigid body 2D component. And what we wanna do is tell this have this player component tell the rigid body how to move or what to do for its movement based off of that input. So let's open up our player script again to make that change. To do that, we can actually get to our player script a couple different ways. We can go back in the way that we went before, or I can just double click on this player script right here and it'll pop it open. So now that I've got my horizontal value, I wanna apply that to my rigid body. I'm going to add another line here and I'm going to say var rb, which is just short for rigid body, equals get component. And I'm not going to hit tab to auto complete this because it's actually wrong. It wants to get a rigid body, but I want a rigid body 2D. There we go. I can actually hit the down arrow and select the correct one. Now I'll hit tab and let it auto complete. So this is going to get a 2D 
rigid body component. If I just did rigid body without the 2D, it's going to fail to find that component because I don't have a non 2D one. That's for the 3D one that was the original name. It's not called rigid body 3D because there was no 2D long before, 3D existed long before 2D ever came around. So it was called rigid body. So I'll undo that with control Z, have my rigid body 2D, and then we'll go to the next line. Let's talk actually really quickly about what this get component does. Get component will actually search the game object that you're calling this component, this this code from, this player script is attached to. So it'll search this game object that this alien has with this player script and look for that type of component. It'll look for a rigid body 2D component. And if it exists, it will assign it to this variable. And in fact, I can change this from being var to be a rigid body 2D and make it slightly more explicit. Now on our next line, we're going to use this RB variable and we're going to use it by setting the velocity. To do that, we say RB, which just gets our, our reference. And look, it actually knows we want to modify the velocity. It just doesn't know what we want to do with it. We'll say dot velocity equals, and we want to make this a new vector two or vector three, I think, new vector two. A new vector two, and a vector two is a variable with an X and a Y value. So imagine you've got a grid with an X going along the horizontal and a Y going along your vertical up and down. The vector two just has the two values that you have, the X value and then the Y value in that order. So the first value that we wanna give it is the X or the value along the horizontal axis, which is gonna be our horizontal value. And then we give it our vertical value. So how what we're doing up and down. For that, I'm just gonna give it a zero and we'll put a semicolon at the end. We'll save this off and then minimize our window, go back into Unity, and we should be able to see our player moving around. Now we just have to hit play. And then let's use the arrow keys or A and D, and we should be able to move left. Look at that, I can move to the left or to the right. Notice that I fall slightly strangely though. That's because right now I'm actually setting that horse or the vertical velocity. We're setting it to zero every frame. So I don't fall smoothly and my falling speed doesn't kind of stay consistent. So let's stop playing and we'll make one last change to that little bit of code. We'll go back to our player script. And instead of putting in a zero for the Y value, let's use our current Y velocity. And we can actually access that by saying rb.velocity.y. So now what we're gonna do is modify the velocity, but we're only modifying the horizontal part, not the vertical part. Now you might wonder why we can't just do rb.velocity.y or x, sorry equals horizontal. And that's because we can't assign one of the variables of a vector two. You can't modify the X or the Y of a vector two. You can only create a new vector two. So we have to not do that and assign that new vector two where we pass in the horizontal and the velocity. Let's go see what this looks like in game. We'll jump back in and press play. We should be able to move and then see our character kind of falling slightly more naturally. They're gonna get that regular gravity fall. There we go. Yep, gravity fell and everything was a little bit normal. So we'll stop playing. We'll go back to Plastic SEM and commit our changes. Say that we've added horizontal movement to our player. And check in the changes. 